Yes, sir. How you doing? Thank you for coming to this Wolf Den podcast. Uh, this is episode 151. Will. Yes, Bob. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, you see what? Uh, oh, you uh, saw the show notes. Shit. You know what's going to happen. We got to change the whole <laughs> show now. We have to come up with a whole new set of news topics. Son of a bitch. Uh, uh, hi. Hi, everybody. Happy partner anniversary. I saw somebody else with that. Uh, is that a thing? I get it's a thing now. Apparently, like if you've been a partner for however many years, and this is the day you became a partner. It, it's a, it's a it's it's a it's a yearly thing. But okay, where does it say it's my partner anniversary? Oh man, it, you know what? It kind of makes sense. I think yeah. I signed on in 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 uh, uh, November. I forgot when. <laughs> Yay! Congrats! Yay! Hooray us. Cool. I have no obligation to Twitch. <laughs> I don't care if I stay here or leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yay. yay. <laughs> anyway, uh, what are we talking about today? They already saw it. You tell already them, saw tell, it. But, tell if, them what but if you're listening to the audio about. version of this podcast, we do have a quite the show for you today. Uh, Xbox signs a deal to bring AI to the platform. Ooh, Ooh everyone this, loves AI. Yes, there's it no, is. There's no problems. Nobody ever has yes. anything bad that, to say about AI. Well, because it is the future, mm -hmm. and this is the way the world is going, and if you don't agree with it, then you're behind the times and you're a dinosaur. Also, I have NFTs for sale if you're interested. Uh, <laughs> In addition Wait, to the <laughs> do you though? No. Okay, because there was a game that came with, I think Ubisoft gave out NFTs at one point. Ubisoft was trying to give out NFTs. Square Enix was like really trying to give out so NFTs. So like, it's possible that you do actually have NFTs. I have. Wait, what, the Batman, didn't the Batman come with no, an NFT? No, 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 okay. I do okay. have, don't ask me how they can get in more. When uh, DC was doing their fandom things during mm -hmm. COVID, one of the things they did was they gave away NFTs to people who like had an account and I happened to have an account. So they just gave me an NFT. It is a GIF of a, of a floppy disk of Superman spinning. If you can tell me <laughs> what the fuck I can do with that, I will give you $5 right that's, now. That's more than the, yes. the, what the NFT is going to be worth. Yeah. So... That's a bargain. Yeah. So it's currently just sitting on a server somewhere, just killing the environment. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't want it. They just gave it to hey, me. Hey, it only kills the environment if it's traded. True. Yeah. So I'm doing I'm doing you a favor. Yeah. You're kill actually you're, by letting people know about it, you're killing the environment. Okay. So should have kept your damn mouth shut. <laughs> uh Okay, what else? That was the one thing that, was, that we're that talking was a about. Big one. That's the main topic, but we got plenty of other news. Uh, Nintendo, despite all the evidence of the contrary, is disputing the existence of the Switch 2. D Nintendo saw our podcast last week and said, no, we're not making that. Yeah. Wolf, uh, the Wolf Bros are dumb. Um, we have new. We have more Nintendo news on a movie that just got announced like an hour before the show went live. Yes, I did, um, I did see that too. And we're not making it the main topic because, you know... Because Nintendo saw our podcast and decided to say we're not doing this. Uh, how long can we talk about the Zelda so, movie? I feel like if we were any other podcast, any other video game podcast with a specialty in Nintendo, we could make it the whole show. Mm -hmm. But because we're not Zelda boys. I have one of those. Yeah, exactly. So the next <laughs> Nintendo podcast, you could do the whole show about that. But we're not Zelda boys. Yeah. So we could probably get about 15 minutes worth. <laughs> yeah, I have nothing to say. Uh, yeah, he's good. They're going to make... Uh, we'll get to it. But yeah. they're going to make a movie. Yeah. Yeah, who didn't see that coming? We have... And I I have concerns. Okay. But we'll get to that later. Uh, Mario Kart 8 DLC. We got a new Sonic game for uh, iOS that actually looks kind of cool. Uh Okay. We got Activision explaining Modern Warfare 3's big ass file size. Um I got I got concerns about Modern Warfare and, 3. And uh and more. And more. Okay. Yes. Oh, an Epic Games uh yes. lawsuit. Yes, We're Epic back, baby. <laughs> then the sequel you didn't know the you Wolf want. The Wolf Den podcast is back. Uh the sequel to Epic vs. Google, Epic No, the sequel to Epic vs. Apple, Epic vs. Google is happening right now, and there was a particular uh nugget from that court case that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, okay. Let's start off by thanking our subscribers. We yes. got K Caleb Fox, thanks for the 16 months. What is the best song from the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 soundtrack? The mm, 2 soundtrack. The 2 soundtrack. Uh, there's No Cigar by Melon Colin. There's Bring the Noise by Public Enemy and Anthrax. 
There's, uh, I think it's Heavy Metal Winter by Consumed. Uh, oh, it's a really good one. Cyclone by the Dub Pistols. That's yes. a good one. I think, uh, wait, wait, this isn't all of the songs. What, what was the first one you said? Anthrax, Anthrax and Public, Public Enemy? Enemy Anthrax, bring that the might, noise. That, that that, might be, yeah. Bring the Noise might be the best one. Yeah. Uh, Gorilla Radio is also on there by Ray Chance. The Gorilla, Shining. I mean, Gorilla Radio is good. Papa Roach, classic Papa Roach. Papa Roach? Yeah, Blood Brothers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, There's only 15 songs? Yeah, that was back when. Wow. Yeah, we didn't know how good we got it. Yeah, Jesus. You is also very good by Bear yes, Religion. Yes, by Bear Religion. Um, what's that? I think I think Public Enemy and Anthrax. Yeah. That's all. May 16th by Lagwagon. That's a good one. Um. All right. Uh, oh, we got more. We got uh, Cisco Yidu. Thank you for the 33 months party hat. Happy partner anniversary. Oh, my God. Thank you thank so much. Thank you. Will Wolf, damn it, <laughs> with the 44 months. Hey, Wolf Bros. Can you believe people actually thought Will's tweet about Bob not letting him post on the Wolf Den Coffee Instagram was real? Classic comedy. People took that very seriously. I was thinking of a response, but I kind of wanted people to think it was real. So I just I I didn't I didn't wanna I didn't wanna like double down. Yeah. I couldn't think of a way. To make it obvious to people who know that it's fake. Yeah. But keep it up for the people who didn't <laughs> right. know it's I couldn't yeah. think of a meeting. So I was just like, you know what? I'll leave it alone. Yeah. And then people will continue to know the lie. Yeah. It was, I mean, someone actually made a change.org petition. <laughs> Bring it up. To get it. Bring it up. There you go. Let Will's talent show. Yeah. I Why mean, this petition? What, sh- you got to put it in the document right, so I I'll can bring it, it up yeah. on the screen. Uh, so you go to, hold on. Uh, I'll show everybody who doesn't know. Uh, I created an Instagram account called Wolf Den Coffee just to post all my dumb coffees. Hey, yeah, that? it's coffee. <laughs> there it is. It's in yeah. a bear cup though. That's a bear. That's that, that cup's is, a bear. That is a very fancy cup. It's an upside down. It, bear. it is not the same as my novelty, you know, uh, Dunkin' Donuts cup from Connecticut. It's the Connecticut branded Dunkin' Donuts cup. So this is uh, okay. There's one signature goal of five. I, I think, think we I think we could smash that. <laughs> let Will's talent show. Currently, Bob is refusing to let Will showcase his taste <laughs> and superior preference of coffee on the Wolf Den Coffee Instagram account, and is frankly disrespectful to all coffee drinkers. <laughs> It is a little elitist. You got your little, you know, your snobby little coffees up there. Ooh, uh, look at all my, my my coffees. And here I am holding my crying son in one hand and trying to work the Keurig with the other. You, what would you, what would that Instagram be called? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what a good name for it would be. Be what? like Will's Coffee for everyone else or something. <laughs> so you have, uh... What do you what do you use a Keurig? I use a Keurig. I also do pour over. Okay. So like those are the two. But like some would argue that's pretentious. Okay. But, but like, well, you like, don't grind it. I don't grind it. Okay. I buy like I have a big tub of Folgers coffee. I get the Dunkin' Donuts flavored coffee. You know. You can I, call it Wolf Wolfden Instant. Okay. Because <laughs> it's like instant coffee. All right. Yeah. I could show off my collection of coffee mugs, the graphic tees of the kitchen as they are. Okay. That's like that, that. That's what it is. Yeah, you're right. I'll, about I'll even that. start putting them in my wife's coffee mugs just to really confuse people. Uh, LJ from WV with 28 months. Well, that didn't go through right the first time. What? Well, I don't know what you're talking. I about. guess you posted something and it didn't go through right the first well, time. Well, thank you for the subscription. I think he meant maybe his subscription. Right. Uh, Samps, thanks for the 19 months. Oh, thanks for gifting a sub to somebody else who has been a subscriber for 19 months. Uh, Will's Beans and Tears. It's <laughs> a good one. That is good. Will should start a Wolf Den air fryer Instagram. Yo. <laughs> Just post your air fryer meals. I got this, uh, these like, uh, fr- uh, not fried, the these frozen burritos from Costco. Oh, God. And now on the package, they say like made for the air fryer. You put them in the air fryer for 20 minutes. Oh, my God. They're really good. Oh, my God. They're so good. Oh, my God. 
uh forest forest lakefront thank you for the subscription all right uh let's 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 oh wait we have we can't talk about ai yet we have to talk about the free games you get this yes. month uh, if you have all of the online services right and by that we just mean playstation plus at yes. this point <laughs> uh yes it's the first tuesday of the month which means sony is giving you free games if you are subscribed to any tier of playstation plus uh starting with mafia 2 the definitive edition for the playstation 4 is uh, that the game we played yes we played the original mafia on the 360 this is when you worked at gamestop yeah and you got to bring home games and you brought home mafia 2 for the 360 i brought home mafia 2 correct okay yes that's the one where you start in sicily correct okay yes and we made a big deal about that yes um i didn't hate that game no i would play it i would play it again it it was weird because it was it touted itself as like a gta clone but it was like shockingly linear didn't it have weird like uh like the traffic laws were strict yes yeah so <laughs> yeah. like i remember because it was i had just got done playing a grand theft auto game and then yeah. i was playing this and uh a cop was up my ass yeah and I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to have to blast this cop away. And then he came up, handed me a ticket, and got back in the car. I was like, wait, whoa. Yeah. I was ready to blow his face off. Um, yeah, so this is like the HD uh, remaster of, of that game. Mm -hmm. um, the Mafia games are like known for their storytelling uh, mm -hmm. prowess of it. And like this game has, has a very good story. It even ties into the first Mafia in a surprising way. Um, but yeah, the open world is really just, you know, a way to get you from your apartment to the mission and then back home. Like mm -hmm. it didn't really serve a greater purpose. Yeah, I don't, I didn't, I don't think I play, I felt like I didn't play enough of it for the world to open up, yeah. but it probably just I don't think isn't it, linear. I don't think it actually opens up. Yeah. I think it's just how to get to the next part. I do remember there were like set pieces. Yeah. Like, like you go here and then, then it, it, it felt like a Call yeah. of Duty game where you're shooting like a, like a bunch of NPCs yeah. and stuff. All uh, right. Next is Dragon Ball The Breakers. What is that? Also on PS4, online asymmetrical action game. A team of seven ordinary citizens try to survive the raider um, who will hunt them down and evolve during the game into an unstoppable force. Uh, the raider being either such Dragon Ball rivals such as Cell, Frieza, and Boo. So basically Friday the 13th, but in Dragon Ball Z. I do remember this. Uh, yeah, everyone was making Friday the 13th games, and then they... they, they it's a Dragon Ball Z, apparently. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. If you want to play a Friday... The, we can't play Friday the 13th anymore, because that's, I think, getting shut down and delisted due to licensing issues. Um, but you well, got, now you have Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now you got Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now you got Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I if you just absolutely need to have Dragon Ball in your asymmetrical... Yeah online game uh speaking of online games but it's not asymmetrical uh aliens fire team elite is the third game that is on ps4 and ps5 play with up to two players or ai as you battle through four Ooh. campaigns to explore the mysterious new planet lv895 build your marine the way you want to uh i've heard people like this game i don't know anything about this game it is uh it's aliens oh there's a lot of aliens there's games. a lot of aliens games and i feel like people Especially since Colonial Marines have been trepidatious about playing Aliens games. But then you had Alien Isolation, which ruled. And apparently people really like this game. Is this like so. XCOM or is this just a third-person shooter? I thought it was a third-person shooter. It is a third-person shooter. Yeah. Okay. Like Gears. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that's not all. Mostly positive. Oh, okay. Uh, there are now Sony Pictures core benefits for all PlayStation Plus members. Okay. What does that mean? We, we are pleased to see strong engagement in uh, Sony Pictures Core since launching earlier this year on PS5 and PS4. Sony Pictures Core provides access to uh, provides sorry provides access for players to buy or rent up to 2,000 movies straight from their console. And as PlayStation Plus members, uh, you'll be you'll get an additional benefit starting November 1st. As part of our launch promotion, PlayStation Plus members will receive a 15% discount on all available. Uh, purchases and rentals in the PlayStation in the Sony Pictures Core during the month of November. I didn't so, even know that was a thing. So the Sony, online store for here, Sony, Sony stuff. Sony Pictures Core is literally just an online store for Sony movies. So you can buy and rent Sony movies 
on your PlayStation. And that's all they have. Yeah. If you have the premium tier, though, you can stream some of them. It's oh. included in your membership. <laughs> so I hope you really like Ghostbusters and the Spider-Man movies, because that's really all Sony's got that to work with. That should really be included in PlayStation Plus Premium. Streaming movies well, should be included in that. Well, it is. But if you want to... F- Wait, I can stream a movie? You can stream a Sony movie in PlayStation in Sony Pictures Core. Yeah, but I... Not Wait. all of them. Some of them. Hold on. All right, let's back up. Sony but Pitch- do I have to pay extra for, for no, Core? It's for a- Sony Pictures Core? No, it's included in your me- in your premium membership. Oh, that's cool. Well, Sony Pictures Core is included in your pre- PlayStation Plus membership, period. Okay. Streaming some of the movies is only for the premium members. Otherwise, you have to buy or rent them with money. I I. How is this hard? How is this hard? I have PlayStation Plus Premium. Yes. What do I have? You you have the ability to stream mm-hmm. like Netflix some of those movies. Okay. I and have PlayStation do- Plus Essential. So you don't. Which means I can only buy them. Okay. But starting November, I get a fifteen percent discount. Okay. Okay. That makes that yeah. makes a lot more sense now. Uh, it says place a Sony Pictures Core launched or like recent like very recently yeah so i've only had that ability to stream these games for like a few weeks i guess i don't know when it okay initial release april 2021 it says we're pleased to see strong engagement for sony pictures course since launching earlier this month on playstation 5 oh. and ps4 so it probably launched on yes. pc or something oh, okay cool man yeah uh i mean that I, yeah that's PlayStation Plus Premium needs more features for how expensive it is. Yes. So uh, they got movies. They do movies. They do so do give movies. Us those. I mean, why not? They have another movie coming. That'll. It'll be. It, this ties into the movie news we're going to talk about later. But we're going to. It would be really something if that movie winds up on Sony Pictures Core. That's foreshadowing, ladies and gentlemen. It's a literary device. <laughs> <laughs> that would be weird. Yes. Uh okay. That's it. That's all the PlayStation uh, yes. uh, uh free games. Xbox doesn't give you free games. No, nope, they just have the Game Pass core, which is 25 predetermined games. They do they they did say they're gonna change that up every once in a while, and when they do change it up, we will of course talk about it on the show. And uh, Nintendo, uh, whenever they have, uh, whenever they feel games. like dropping something, uh, I I think there was new games recently. We we must have talked. About we I that. think we did. Yeah. Uh oh yeah, Castlevania. And stuff. Yeah yeah. Okay. Uh, next we'll start talking about. Uh, oh wait. I, cl- I closed all my tabs here. <laughs> there was uh, somebody over here. Uh, get Somebody fucking subscribed. What's your name? Charlie Fenn. Thank you for the three months. Uh, not sure how I feel about how I sounded like Will's stalker in the last episode. <laughs> anyway, Charlie. renewing my Prime sub from the UK. Any thoughts on if Nintendo are winding down Amiibo, especially with Wonder being the first Mario to have no Amiibo support? I didn't even Ooh. realize that. Uh, they've been winding down Amiibo for a long time. Are they winding down or are they just... Well, they're winding down Smash Brothers. That's like the flagship Amiibo. They game. have winded down since Smash Brothers. Yeah. For sure. Uh, I just think that... I think that they will continue to make Amiibo. Yeah. But uh, it'll be less and less. Just like it, it has been. Yeah. It won't be what it was, definitely. Yeah. yeah Zelda will have stuff. Uh, um. Zelda? It is really weird that Mario Wonder doesn't have any. Yeah, that's, that's surprising. Really weird. I didn't even think about mm-hmm. that. Uh, Zelda has some. Monster Hunter always has some. Uh, Splatoon has... Yeah, so yeah. does Splatoon 3 have any? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anyway. Hey, Bob and Will. Shout out to the Sony slash Nintendo partnership. Foreshadowing. <laughs> I'm curious about that. We'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about AI finally. Yes. Uh, Microsoft is bringing AI characters to the Xbox. 
Microsoft is partnering with InWorld AI to develop Xbox tools that will allow developers to create AI-powered characters, stories, and quests. The multi-year partnership will include an AI design co-pilot system that Xbox designers can use to create detailed scripts, dialogue trees, quest lines, and more. At Xbox, we believe that with better tools, creators can uh, make even more extraordinary games, explains Haiyan Zhang, general manager of gaming AI at Xbox. Oh, this boy. partnership will bring together InWorld's expertise in working with generative AI models for character development, Microsoft's cutting edge cloud-based AI solutions, including Azure OpenAI service, Microsoft's researches uh, technical insight into the future of play, and Team Xbox's strength in revolutionizing accessibility and responsible creator tools for all developers. The multi-platform AI tool set will also include the uh, will also include the AI design copilot for scripts and dialogue and an AI character engine that can be integrated into games and used to dynamically generate stories, quests, and dialogue. InWorld has been working on AI NPCs that react uh, to questions from players, such as much like how ChatGPT or Bing Chat respond to natural language inquiries. Um, these AI NPCs can respond in unique voices and can include complex dialogue trees or personalized dynamic storylines within a game. In-world technology can also be used for narration, so, companion so companions in top-down RPGs can warn of groups of enemies or players up ahead. AI has long been an integral part of the gaming development with applications ranging from enemy AI to procedural generation, says Aya Gelfenberg. No, Gelfin Bain, nailed it, CEO of InWorld AI. The emergence of large language models and generative AI has unlocked new opportunities for storytelling and character engagement within games. Microsoft is only offering this as an optional tool for game developers, so it will be up to them to decide on the level of generative AI in future titles. The finals developer, Embark Studios, recently had to defend against its use of AI-generated voices, arguing that making games without actors isn't an end goal. I was going to bring that up. That was yeah. the first thing I thought about with this. They're, they were like the most recent example of AI being used uh, for a video game. Yeah. Uh, any use of generative AI in creative fields like game design or voice acting is controversial, with the SAG-AFTRA Actors Union voting uh, to approve strike authorization for video game performers recently. Between the exploitive uses of AI and lagging wages, those who work in video games are facing many of the same issues as those who work in film and television, says SAG Astra Chief Contracts Officer Ray Rodriguez. Yes. Microsoft is positioning its tool as a helping hand, much like how it has positioned its co-pilot system for Microsoft 365 and Windows. We want to help make it easier for developers to realize their vision, uh, trying new things, push the boundaries of gaming today, and experiment to improve gameplay, player connection, and more, says Zhang. Uh, we will collaborate and innovate with game creators inside Xbox Studios as well as third-party studios as we develop the tools that meet their needs and inspire new possibilities for future games. Um, yeah, I wanted to make this the main topic because I think I have a controversial opinion on AI. Okay. Um. I think that it's inevitable and that uh, obviously there needs to be a lot of regulations around it. But, mm -hmm. um, and SAG AFTRA was, was uh, striking particularly be or wanted to strike. I don't think they ever did though for, for, right. for voice actor, for, for video game voice actors. Not, not this strike. Okay. Yeah. I think they, they striked a few years ago and like it kind of went nowhere. Mm -hmm. So they just, gave up <laughs> so they wanted to strike about uh ai voice acting i mean well they actual uh uh, uh tv and movie actors yeah striked for for ai reasons um and i think that's reasonable yeah but anytime you bring up ai people get mad about it yeah um i think that it seems inevitable and really useful to have like exa for example in the finals an ai that can react to anything that's happening that's not i don't think that's necessarily replacing a job from somebody that is uh creating a whole new tool that would have never been used otherwise right you know it's it's a it's an expansion on stuff that we already have that would have just never have happened prior yeah. you know yeah um because like I also heard that 
I, I haven't played the finals, but I heard that the AI sounds horrible. <laughs> it, it doesn't work yeah. right at all. But that's what I think of when I think of AI voice acting. I think of it, something that could react to anything. It could say anybody's name. It could react to anything that you're doing. And that's not something that could necessarily be achieved by having a voice actor in a booth for thousands of hours. Right. You know, they'd, ha they'd have to make their own Siri yeah. and game developers aren't going to do that every time they need to develop a game apparently the one thing the ai vo uh voice actor couldn't do is the grunts like, the, oh. uh, ah! like the yeah. ai doesn't know how to do that yet so they still need humans for something yeah they would need to bring in a human to fill in all of the blanks and then like f even siri is a person yeah that's a person that said a bunch of stuff yes for months and then they generated it into series so they yeah. would need to do something like that anyway um and there's other things too like uh i heard about um uh what was it uh unity was building an ai uh interface for unity so yeah. instead of learning how to make a unity game you can just say Give me the physics of a Mario game, make it 2D and put the put all the Goombas here. You know, mm -hmm. like you could you could tell it the type of game that you wanted and then it would make it. Uh that's scary because that will uh I don't want to say take jobs away. It probably will take jobs away, yeah. but it will make game development a lot more accessible to a lot of people too. And people who know how to develop games already they're going to be the ones coming in to fix all of the problems yeah. that were that happened because there's these new people that uh only know how to type into an ai interface yeah it's scary i think because this is a new tool that people uh it changes everything it changes uh the way every everything's been done a certain way for years and now this completely changes everything. But there's still going to need to be people to input into the AI. There's still going to be need to be people to fix the stuff that AI can't do. Yeah. So it's you just gonna have, people are just gonna have to learn how to how to navigate it. That's it. And there's gonna have to be regulations. I, right. I, I think the White House was doing some AI shit. The, last yeah, week. the White House like they signed like a big sweeping AI reform because yeah. uh, Biden watched Mission Impossible. Uh, Dead Reckoning, and that's all about how AI. No, this is that's actually what happened. He watched Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning. The villain of that movie is AI. He's like, oh, we got to do something about this AI. Oh my good lord, she needs to watch more movies. <laughs> we need to make more movies so that Biden can see yeah. the horrors of the world. Is what I'm learning. I um, saw someone said he should watch Andor next. <laughs> what's 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 the? It's all about like how you know oppressive governments are bad. Oh, uh, okay. You know the thing he's in. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just think people are scared. But, but yes, there, there needs to be regulations. Like there's uh, because it's really easy to exploit. Yeah, it's really easy to just say like, you know, I pressed a button, I created this work of art, I'm just as good as everybody else. The temptation to use that and only that is there, and the fear that people have is it's going to replace everything yeah i was listening to the verge to actually did an interview with uh barack obama oh. settle down dad um <laughs> and he talked he talked about this he talked about like the fears of ai and like taking over and stuff but what he said was can you use ai for a lot of things yes looking up files that can do that better than a human can um cataloging things yes absolutely um can it replicate Bob Dylan, no. AI cannot, because you still need a human element to do something yeah. creative and something artistic. So something like music and movies and video games and comic books. I mean, AI can assist, but it will never, it will never create whole cloth what a human can do. And I think the fear is that it's pe people will become too reliant on the AI to create rather than creating yourself in a, in a sense. So I disagree a little bit. I think that AI does have the potential to create works of art that would be indistinguishable from what a human can make. I just think that uh, right now, the way it does it is it literally copies actual right. working artists. Um, I think that the governments need to create regulations where you cannot say 
I want a, a, a Laura Croft Tomb Raider in the style of Art Germ, you know, right. and then you're just ripping off Art Germ uh, because you have to input. It's 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 a copyright issue. Yeah. You're, you're well, they already it's already been said that like AI generated work cannot be copyrighted. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. But I I, I mean, uh, taking copyrighted work putting it into the AI and then saying, give me an output. Right. That needs to be regulated. Mm -hmm. That is an issue because people could put in all Wolf Den videos yeah. and then say, give me a Wolf Den video <laughs> that says that he loves uh, fucking butts. Butts. Yeah. I mean, no, you actually did a video about how I you love butts. Yeah. That is a video that exists. <laughs> um, so that's something that needs to be regulated. But in terms of like an AI creating a work of art, I mean, you know the way humans do that is they is they look at art throughout history and a lot of that's <laughs> public domain yeah and uh you know they they you can see with music music is, yeah. is a lot easier to to because because music is a formula right and well to music i the the last beatles song that just came out now and then mm -hmm. there's a lot of hoopla made about how they used ai to separate uh, John Lennon's vocal track from the yeah. piano track on the cassette tape. To me, that's not a bad use of AI because yeah. that was just trying to get what they needed off of the cassette. It's no different than what's been in audition, Adobe Audition for yeah. years, just in a primitive state. That's you, the final form of what's been available in Adobe Edition. Yeah, I don't like how AI, AI did not, is... AI did not create John Lennon's voice. Yeah. It just was able to bring it to the forefront. I don't like how AI is such a general term. Yeah. It's artificial I think, I think, intelligence, but... I think that's the big issue here. Yeah. Because a lot of things that weren't considered AI two years ago are now considered AI. Yeah. And I think it's, it's conflating, like, the bad kind of AI, like, lazy artwork and, you know, vocal manipulation, like, recreating voices without actor consent is it's lumping that ai in with like actually useful ai like yeah. cataloging and things like that yeah i got into an argument the other day i forgot exactly what it was about but somebody told me that something i did was ai and i was like no it's it's like an if statement it's like yeah. it's like it's not the same it's it's a a pro you, you can't just call any program ai yeah. it's not it's not the same uh it has to like learn something and 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 come up with its own prompts yeah. you know uh that's the sort of scary AI, but in terms of the Beatles uh, thing, it's yeah, it was literally just they cleaned up his audio. Yeah, they, they, they they took his his uh, his, vo his vocals, vocals off of. Yeah. Were they removed from the piano or something? Yeah, because he recorded the vocals in the piano on the same cassette tape, mm. so they like we were finally able to like separate the two properly. Yeah. And yeah, AI for audio in that regard is very similar to just filters. Like yeah. like I I have used it. Uh, Adobe Premiere and auditions. I think it's just Premiere. I was using Adobe Premiere's AI mm -hmm. uh, for cleaning up some audio because all it really does is it applies the correct filters. Right. It, 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 it analyzes the track and it goes, uh, okay, these are the filters you need to make the the vocals sound the best. Yeah. Um. So I that's reasonable. It's not really like generating uh, creative work. It's just yeah. taking what was there and making it nice. Because it's a tool. You still wrote the script for the video, you still shot the video, you still edited the video, you still uploaded the video, you just used AI or whatever it actually is as an assist to the overall creative product. Exactly. And I think that that's, people are going to, you can't avoid that. Yeah. That, that's going to be how things are going to work from now on. There's, yeah. Uh, uh, I'll also bring up that uh, one, t I, Benny is uh, my editor and, yes. and he uh, sent over a YouTube short once and I was like, I don't remember shooting these shots so wide. How did he get them like vertical like this? Mm -hmm. And now I'm trying to f see if I can, f I don't remember exactly which short it even was. Um, but turns out this was right when Photoshop released their uh, AI mm -hmm. tools. And he took a screenshot of the frame, uh, generated the rest of the frame and right. then cut out the middle where the actual video was and it looked indistinguishable yeah. from my actual house it was like amazing yeah. except for one frame yeah. was fucked up enough where i was like all right i could see that something yeah. you, you did something here 
Um, I think I remember you telling me about that. And that came out like the day after I saw it was circulating Twitter. Somebody said, uh, look what I was able to do with AI. I took all these classic movies and I made them vertical. Oh, yeah. And oh, I, they did that with matte paintings for Star Wars or something. They did that with Star Wars. They did yeah. it with uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. They did that with like all these other like classic movies that were specifically shot in widescreen. <laughs> but he's like, no, I'm going to fill the frame so you can watch it on TikTok. Because I am the future. I never almost broke my computer. It was pretty cool. I thought, that, I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, my God. I, you know what? Actually, Be I think Benny saw that and that's why he did it. Oh, and then I'm I to told him because because a lot of it was the Star Wars stuff, and then I told him back in the day they literally painted the rest yeah. of the frame, and then I showed him the matte paintings that they used in Star Wars. Yeah, this whole AI thing reminds me a lot of when I was in school for graphic design. Mm -hmm. All of my teachers were old graphic designers, mm -hmm. and they were old. What happened was computers happen <laughs> and they all refused to learn the new ways of doing graphic design because it used to be like literal paper and yeah. fucking you know uh, uh t squares and shit um which is how uh, they taught us because they didn't know the computer stuff yeah um they didn't learn the computer stuff so they didn't have jobs and they were like why everybody's hiring all these other people yeah so then they all got jobs as teachers because they didn't Conform. Right. Another one was uh, I had a teacher that did um, concept art, mm -hmm. and she did movies, and then wasn't hired for the new movie that the director that she worked for was doing. Uh, and I was excited because I wanted to be a concept artist for video games. Yeah. So I brought in my art book for Assassin's Creed. Yeah. And I was like, look, look at how nice these look because the Assassin's Creed art book looks like. Yeah. Like oil paintings and shit. It looks like really cool. So I showed her, and she's like, oh my god, these are so beautiful. And then she's like, wait a minute. Some of these are photographs because they it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they have to make a lot of concept yeah. art. So sometimes they will just take photos and draw over them and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's what they do now. They like it's all digital, so they take photos. And yeah. she's like, that's not art. <laughs> and in my head, I was like, that's why you don't have a job anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine line between uh, rotoscoping and tracing. You know, I guess that's what she. Well, yeah. that's we, we've heard that with comic books, like Neil Adams. Talking about how... Well, no, he says everybody copy. Uh, friend of the show, Gavin Gidry, is in the chat, so he can talk about this. Well, he can jump in anytime he wants. By the way, Gavin, good work today. <laughs> Superman 78, the, the Metal Curtain, fantastic work. Hand-drawn by Gavin Gidry in the chat. Everyone go out and buy it. It's available on Comixology. It is available at your local comic book store. I will be pimping that book until the trade comes out, and I will continue to pimp it. What was your what was your point? I was saying Neil Adams straight up said everybody used to trace. Everybody used to copy. No, he said trace. He said copy. He, he when he was on the 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 Kevin, Kevin Smith, Smith yeah, yeah, he said Th these covers I copied this. Like, he I said, traced. He said he traced. No, that's not what he was saying. He he was saying how like people copy each other. Yo, know, because the whole idea is like you got to be original, you have to be like unique and stuff. And he was trying to argue everybody copies everybody, right? Because there's always an influence from someone. There's always a way to like you know pull something from this and that to create what you want to create. That's what he was getting at. I do remember Greg Capullo saying that uh, he using references is like pussy shit, yeah. and then. He showed all of his old references from when he used to work at Marvel. Yeah. I was like, what is it then, man? Because <laughs> artists are like, artists when they're learning are afraid to use reference because they think that it's not art unless it all comes out of their head. Yeah. But that's, yeah, that's not how it is. References are used all the time. Yeah. Gavin says, I'm tracing 3D models and then redrawing them. I know that, uh, What's his name? What's his fucking name? I I, I forget. What I, book did he do? He does Spider Man and he does watercolor paintings and it looks like a. a Bermuda? No, no, no. I don't know. He does a lot of Marvel stuff. Okay. Uh, but I know he will make 3D models and he will make clay stuff and then take pictures of that yeah. and then draw over it. Um, whatever.
Oh, and Gavin says he makes the figures from, from yeah. scratch. Yeah. Well, uh, what, what was, we got way off of the topic of AI at this point. <sighs> we did and we didn't because it, that's the thing. It's it's so contentious about like what it because it can be useful, but how far are you going to go with using it mm-hmm. is the is the question. Are you going to use it to help like fix one little thing in the edit? Or are you going to use it to create the artwork whole cloth? And I think the fear is, especially high up the food chain, you know, at the top of the corporation, what's cheaper? Hiring a whole team to create the work of art or hiring two teenagers to press a button and having the computer create it from scratch? Yeah, that's part of it. That's the fear. the biggest problem is that everybody who is creating these regulations is old and doesn't understand what's right. going on. Uh, AI is not inherently a bad thing. AI can be used in ways that's just very helpful, but it can be used in bad ways that is is yeah. hurtful and it needs to be regulated. So every time you hear AI, it isn't necessarily the end of the world. Right. Which is my point about this Xbox thing is that yeah. it might not necessarily be the end all be all. I see people like calling for boycotts. Well, that actually leads us into the next topic. Okay. Which is um developers respond. Okay. Uh in a post yeah, uh f- where is it? Xbox Sparks Dev Revolt with new AI writing partnership. Lots of people are going to get fired. Games will get worse. And C suite will get millions. Yes. Uh yes. Games have already gotten worse. <laughs> uh what was that? I'm looking for I'm just trying to jump ahead to like where the actual Okay. While you're doing that, I'm yeah. trying to find the YouTube short where Benny used AI. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh so yeah. Elias uh Tofliex, uh, who is known as Deus Ex is Adam Jensen and Starfield's Sam Coey. Uh, Describe the announcement on Twitter. If you want to start a voice acting career, don't bother, he wrote. Adding all these jobs of nameless background NPCs that give us all our start in the industry, they're going to go away. I'm already bitter. Uh, f- another fucking strike is coming, concluded, another, uh, concluded the actor in response to a tweet asking if video game actors were unionized. That was hardly an uncommon reaction. Other actors, including God of War and Genshin Impact, Shelby Young and Xander Mobus, the voice of Persona 5's Joker, uh, took to Twitter to recognize their discontent. Uh, Seems like a massive waste of money and resources that could otherwise go to humans who actually craft the games we play, uh, wrote Mobius. Noting that uh, the quality of the content generated by AI writing bots is generally subpar compared to human authored work. It's not just the actors getting upset uh, developer Rami Ish, uh, Ismail uh, offered up a bleak summation of the direction of the games industry and AI with the words, uh, lots of people are going to get fired, games will get worse, and the C-suite will get millions. Um, Jill Shard, the lead narrative designer on the Lamplighters League, encouraged, uh, encouraged fellow devs to get caught up on the sag Astra strike and its relationship to AI, noting that actors are on the front lines right now in the struggle against corporate greed and unethical uses of AI. So it's not a particularly positive reaction from devs and actors that Xbox is ostensibly setting out uh, to help with tools like this, which uh, this writer must have, uh, has to say, must have been a very, lo- a very predictable a long, long time before the announcement went live on Microsoft's site. Nonetheless, uh, massive companies seem to be committing as ever to introducing AI to the game development. I suspect uh, Tufexis uh, is right, and we have a long fight ahead of us, several strikes in our future. So yeah, people are not happy about this. People are not happy, but I, I think uh, a lot of it's gloom and doom. A lot of it is people uh, hearing AI and, and freaking the fuck out. Right. Um, the All of the anger that everybody has about the the worst case scenarios of ai should be directed towards the people who can create regulations for these sorts of things because that should fix a lot of the issues right um uh i found the youtube short okay also gavin says uh if he's got a row of cars he's tracing the cars i mean cars aren't people (laughs) cars aren't people 
So this is the YouTube short. You can very, now that I'm looking at it, you can so clearly tell that it's AI. But if you don't know, you won't. Right. So like that is not my my wall. Right. Um, That is, I wish you could rewind. Uh, All of these frames have AI in some way. This is not my living room. This is something else. You can even see it's all fucked up back there. Um, But yeah. Also, I wanted to bring this up. Uh, RGT85 uh, said this in response to somebody who was uh, saying that they're boycotting Microsoft. Um, Sony also has an AI thing that they've had mm. for, I think, since 2021. Yeah. Uh, but this isn't game specific. This is very general Sony AI. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little bit of a false equivalency, but it doesn't mean that Sony won't also start using AI right. for their games. Let, uh, let me read this. This is the latest update on the SAG strike. Okay. Uh, and it's in regards to AI. Uh, SAG Astra continues to recoil at the idea of AI produced cartoon characters performing the tasks of living, breathing and payable artists and also deceased ones on the subject of those background actor scans. Cause originally part of the problem was the studios wanted to scan background actors so that they can just put them in movies anytime they want without having to pay the actor. Yeah. So that was, uh, that president was set with back to the future. Wasn't it? No, that's a different, it's a pre- different thing. Yeah. There's a different thing. Why is it? Cause different? they, because they used actual clips from the movie. They well, used actual clips from Back to the Future 1 in the mo- in Back to the Future well, 2. No, the problem that I'm referring to is they took... Uh, what the, well, who was Crispin the Glover. Yeah, they took Crispin Glover and they just fucking took his face and put it on another actor's face. No, they didn't They didn't actually put his face on another actor. No, they, act- they took the new actor and they added prosthetics to make him look like Crispin yeah, Glover. That's, and that's why Crispin no, no, Glover no. sued them. No, he, he sued them because they used clips from the first movie... In the second movie without his consent. That's what the problem was. Okay. No, he, no, no, yeah, no, yes, no. Yes. The problem was that that could also be the problem, but I heard that the problem was that people confused the new actor with Crispin Glover, and that's what he was mad about. Because they married the prosthetic, the actor with prosthetics applied to clips of Crispin Glover from the first movie. So it created this idea that, like, Crispin Glover is still in the movie, even though he was not in the movie. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Y- yeah. But it wasn't the fact that they hired another another actor. They hire other no, actors. No, no, to no. It's the fact that they made him look like Crispin Glover and tricked everybody into thinking that he was still in the movie. Because they used clips from the first movie. And prosthetics. No, it was the clips from the first movie. They added prosthetics and put them upside down so that it was yes, harder I to tell <laughs> that that they added prosthetics that and it's a different do. guy. No, the problem isn't that they added prosthetics to the actor. Like they can do that. That's that's not the issue. The issue is that they took clips from the previous movie without his consent and they put it in the new movie and they didn't pay him for it. Okay. The the point is that that set a president that they can't just p- pretend like an actor is in a movie. Well, <laughs> with AI they're treating AI like a different thing because it's computer generated. Let me read the. Let me just okay, read what okay, it says. Okay. Okay. On the subject of background actor scans, uh, which would allow studios to create a digital likeness of an actor's face and use it how use it however and whenever they see fit, SAG and the AMPTP are still at odds. Per the Hollywood Reporter, SAG is trying to get compensation for reusing scans and for studios to pay for those scans. Currently, the language allows studios and streamers the ability to use scans of dead performers without consent. Uh, one source told the Hollywood Reporter that it behooves them to have you dead in that they need consent when you're alive, but not when you're dead. These studios really saw the response to the ending of The Flash and decided that it should be the future of entertainment. I Because th- this was a concern to me when they had Carrie Fisher and Tarkin and all that shit was yeah. just they just put them in the movies yes and uh they had to ask the estate they to had, do they that. had to ask the estate of uh, or, did, or did they not have to no they they actually had to ask the estate of peter cushing who played mm-hmm. Tarkin, and carrie fisher was still alive at the time so she was able to say sure why not I, i'm on drugs <laughs> 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 she would have been okay with that um so yeah that like they would they had to go get permission but the 
the thing the thing now with AI is the idea of you scan the person once and you pay them the one time while they're alive mm. and then you can use their image in perpetuity even after they're dead and you don't have to get permission anymore. Spoiler alert for the Flash movie. I don't care. Don't see that movie. But at the end of the Flash movie, they break the timeline and you see horrible cartoon CGI images of Christopher Reeve, of uh, Helen, Helen Slater, of George Reeve, of Adam West, of Cesar Romero, of Nicolas Cage. <laughs> like... God knows that some of these estates didn't get didn't give permission. You know, the horrible thing is that George Reeve killed himself because he couldn't handle the pressure of being super of playing Superman. And yet here you are parading his corpse around in the costume. Like, hey, remember me from the 50s? No, because nobody is alive from the 50s anymore. Yeah. So like that's that's what they're getting at. Like they don't want the flash to happen again. Yeah. I don't want the flash to happen again. But, but is it that the way it is now is that they have to get like this this is about uh getting an actor scanning their body and putting it in video games and stuff for as as much as they want. Yeah. That's what this uh, uh without proper compensation and consent. Yeah. Yeah. So is it that the way the law is now, they have to get them to sign off on having it every in perpetuity sing, every, or that they can just scan it once and use it in perpetuity without having to get it signed? My off? understanding is the way it works now is for the most, like if someone scans your likeness <clears throat> and they want to use your likeness in a product, they have to ask, they have to get your permission every single time. Yeah. Um, there are cases like what uh, Griffin X brings up, James Earl Jones uh, said it was okay to use his voice for Darth Vader in perpetuity. So, like, even after he passes away, they can use his voice to create Darth Vader's voice in the future. Okay. But James Earl Jones is able to give that permission while still alive. Right. Yeah. Uh, Lost Tech 4, George Lucas owns the likeness of Leia, Luke Han, and R2-D2. But only for like merchandising not necessarily for movies and tv mm -hmm. like young luke is still played by mark hamill just in motion capture like they still have to get him to sign off on that again carrie fisher was alive when she signed off on her appearance in rogue one yeah so uh, uh... if they're going to perform the character they still need to give consent to perform the character mark hamill said that he's cool with being just straight up replaced yeah which i think is what they absolutely need to do mm -hmm. they just need to get a new guy yeah because like that that magic trick at the end of mandalorian on, uh season two only worked the one time yeah <laughs> yeah no that was awesome yeah. and that worked great and then he showed up again in book of boba fett and he's like all right this this isn't working anymore i want to see more luke uh but in his prime and Mark Hamill's not in his prime. Right. We need a new guy. Yeah. And that'd be totally fine if they just replace it with a new guy. That'd yeah. be I'd be fine with that. Um but anyway, yeah. So that is the type of conversation that needs to be had to to set the 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 the, the regulations because uh, otherwise um you're going to have these giant corporations who are just hitting a button yeah, and having Yeah. That's and that's ultimately what the fear is that you know the the C suite will just hit a button and fart out something and think it'll be good enough and hope that you know we just go like pigs to the trough yeah to consume yeah. it yeah i mean there's always going to need to be humans somewhere to uh massage things a little bit to move things in the in the to get things moving in the right direction because ai is not oh it's it's any like any tool there needs to be something to navigate in the world with the way that you're yeah. going to want to put it. Also, if you just use AI for everything, eventually people are going to want something fresh yeah. that AI can't necessarily do. Anyway. Um, is that it? Is that all our AI talk? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, the Konami man with 14 months been sick the last two days 
but wanted to make sure I got my sub in. Also, hope everyone that could vote did so today. Fuck. <laughs> Speaking of uh, getting our lawmakers to do the right thing. <laughs> whoops. It was a local election. It's not like it matters. <laughs> everyone knows that those are the... <laughs> I'll never forget the shirt that said the mayor of Jaws 1 is still the mayor in Jaws 2. Local elections matter. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, hey, Bob, it's been years since I watched a stream and I came to you as a humble man in need uh, after a rather painful incident that I won't go into detail on, but are you still sponsored by Manscaped? <laughs> um, It's been a while since I've, been, since I've done a Manscaped yeah. sponsorship. Uh, probably manscaped.com slash den. Or wolf den. No, it might be just den. Because we did the sponsorship on the podcast, and I think it was We wolf did it den. on the sp on the podcast, but then I did one. Yeah, you had a separate one. I had a separate one, yeah. yeah. Oh, this is it. It's wolf20. Ah. W-U-L-F-F-20. I'm not sure if we ever got paid for the podcast ones. Because <laughs> that was... I was supposed to get the uh, right the payment, and I just never fucking did. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about everyone's favorite Nintendo Switch Two, baby. Yep. Uh, rumor of the Switch successor. Are, uh, rumors of the Switch successor are hotting are hotting up by the day. Rumors is hot. This is British. They're British. I'm going to chalk it up to them being British. Okay. I hope it's just that because otherwise, oh boy. <laughs> Rumors of the Switch successor are heating up by the day. There you go. Um, though Nintendo Pres President Shintaro Furukawa seems keen to challenge the accuracy of the claims. In a recent financial call, the contents of which were written up on the Japanese site uh, Mainichi, Furukawa dug into some of the latest Switch 2 discussions, speaking on the claim that Nintendo's follow-up console was showcased behind closed doors at this year's Gamescom event. The company president stated, the rumors online that appear to be public information are not accurate. Um, remember, this rumor stated that certain developers had the chance to see a demo of the next Nintendo system at the Cologne conference this year. Uh, rumor corroborated by both Eurogamer and VGC. And that the console was allegedly capable of running Breath of the Wild at 4K60 as well as Epic's Matrix Awakening um, Unreal Engine 5 demo. According to Nintendo Everything's translation, Furukawa also took the opportunity to comment on the company's dual screen patent that sparked rumors of a potential Switch 2 design just weeks ago. On this, Furukawa stated the following. We apply for a patent knowing the information will be made public. This does not mean uh, we plan to equip future products with this. Now, you might read the above comments and want uh, to put all of the rumor talk to bed, and fair enough, but let's bear in mind that business statements like these are rarely all that simple. It makes a lot of, it makes a lot of sense that Nintendo would deny or at least challenge rumors this close to a holiday season as word of an upcoming console runs the risk of damaging sales for the current Switch SKU um, as people decide to wait instead of picking one up for Christmas. Let's, not, uh, let's also not forget that Nintendo has also been known to make denials in the past only... Uh, only for the rumors to be confirmed a short while later. Remember when the official statement that the 3DS would not be getting a redesign? Uh, yeah, our XL models would like a word. At the time of writing, we're pretty certain that no official word on the Switch 2 will be coming uh, our way at all this year, and science point to a 2024 announcement and maybe release. For a full rundown of everything we know about the next console, here are some links below. The uh, important thing is uh, that Furukawa said that... Uh, they apply for the patent knowing that it'll be made public. And I thought yeah. that um, was obvious. Mm -hmm. um, it might, I, I talked a lot about this patent, but that might be something that I never vocalized that uh, they, they know that it it's public information when they make a patent. That's mm -hmm. why a lot of the patents are wacky and bizarre yeah. because uh, they know that it's going to be something they're not necessarily going to make. I don't remember when they filed the patents for the actual Nintendo Switch. Like, no, I think I the no Joy-Con patents and stuff were filed after it was revealed. Yeah. Um. So, we're going to probably see the patents for the next Switch after we see the actual, what it's actually going to yeah. be. Yeah. Uh, I think it's interesting that he says... 
uh, this does not necessarily mean we plan to equip fe- future products with this. With what? The the dual screen functionality. The functionality. The f- I guess the patent. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's not yeah. the functionality. In my mind, I was like, equip it with what? Does that mean that that was an accessory? But yeah. no, it means that the, what's the functionality of that? You're right. Um. Yeah. So it doesn't mean it's not happening. Yeah. But. It, also, it would make a lot of sense for them to want to hold the patent until it is public and for, until the device is public and then yeah. they'll, they'll release the patents. Uh, I don't think Nintendo has to worry about any other big game company stealing their uh, ideas because their ideas are so wacky in such a way that they would only ever work as a Nintendo product. Yeah, I think we've seen people try to steal their ideas and it just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I don't think I don't think Sony could make a switch and sell 130 million units yeah no i don't think lenovo is going to be selling 130 million units with their new uh device that they got uh it's in the other room yeah if you want to see it i've take a take a peek uh anyway PlayStation uses cross Nintendo uses X and Xbox just steals lies and cheats whatever whatever (laughs) they can to the market okay uh yep that means that the new console will not look anything like we've seen so far um i mean it's it could still utilize some of this patent but i don't i mean nintendo's lied before so they could straight up just be doing damage control but no i mean we did bring this up last time that uh we saw patents uh before the switch was revealed that looked super bizarre like the 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 controller that had that was all screen yeah um and then everybody started making mock-ups of the switch based on that patent yeah. and trying to pass them off as real and uh the switch ended up looking nothing like that so mm-hmm. this is probably most likely the same thing the switch will probably yeah. the switch 2 will probably look nothing like this i did see that um Digital Foundry did a video where they tried to like explain what the Switch 2 will be like in terms of power based mm-hmm. on the rumored chip that it's going to use. Um, and it seems very powerful, but in line with Nintendo's uh, philosophy of not being too powerful, like right. they're always like just a little bit behind. Yeah, yeah. Um, they said they could not get the Unreal. Uh, the the Matrix Unreal Engine yeah. demo to run on their version okay. of the, of the chip or something like that. Anyway, uh, more Zelda. Yes. Nintendo announces live action Zelda movie. Ooh, wow. this is it. Uh, here we go. Nintendo President uh, Shintaro Furukawa and uh, today announced uh, that it was develop a live action film of the legend of zelda the film will be produced by shigeru miyamoto representative director and fellow of nintendo and avi arad chairman of arad productions inc who has produced many mega hit films who the fuck is this guy avi arad is um the producer behind all the spider-man movies and I believe he uh, also did the the early X Men films. He uh, he did that because I yes. saw pictures of him and Hugh Jackman. Yes, uh, he got his start as a uh, as an executive at Toy Biz. Him and Ike Perlmutter, yeah. and then because they were making the Marvel toys, and then when Marvel was in bankruptcy, Toy Biz bought Marvel, merged the two companies together, and Avi Arad headed up the film production side of things, like helping develop the okay. movies and stuff. Uh, the characters into movies, and this is before Kevin Feige got involved and created Marvel Studios. Uh, we'll come back to him. Okay. <laughs> uh, the film will w- w- the film will be produced by Nintendo and Arad Productions and directed by Wes Ball. Uh, the film will be co financed by Nintendo and Sony Pictures Entertainment, uh, with more than fifty percent financed by Nintendo. The theatrical distribution of the film will be done worldwide by Sony Pictures Entertainment Incorporated. By producing uh, visual contents of Nintendo IP by itself, Nintendo is creating new opportunities to have people from around the world 
uh, to access the world of entertainment which Nintendo has built uh, through different means apart from dedicated gaming consoles. By getting deeply involved in the movie production with aim to put smiles on everyone's faces through entertainment, Nintendo will continue its efforts to produce unique entertainment and deliver it to as many people as possible. Uh, and of course, we got the tweet, the requisite, this is Miyamoto tweet, so you know it's serious. <laughs> This is Miyamoto. I have been working on a live action uh, film of The Legend of Zelda for many years now with Avi Arad-san, uh, who has produced many mega hit films. I have asked Arad-san to produce this film with me, and we have now officially started the development of the film with Nintendo itself heavily involved in the production. It will take time until its completion, but I hope you will look forward to seeing it. And this is kind of breaking news, but we do have a production image. <laughs> The very first production image of uh, the Zelda movie. Well, it's not Chris Pratt. This so. is a co costume test. Okay. Yeah, that's what this is. Oh, and we also have Tingle. <laughs> I wonder what other characters they're going yeah. to they're have. Uh, so I looked up Arad. Yes. Uh, or, or this is his production company, I think. Um. First thing is Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Yes, that's number one. He, he's still involved in the Spider Man movies. Craven the Hunter, Spider Man Homecoming, yeah. Spider Man Beyond the Spider Verse, Uncharted. Oh yeah, he did that. <laughs> very, it's very Sony. I'm noticing. Yeah, the top five. Well, yeah, he's, he has a partnership with Sony. That's interesting. Yeah, considering he's uh, doing a Nintendo movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that foreshadowing we did about a Nintendo movie coming to the PlayStation film streaming service. This is what we were talking about, if you didn't get it. Also, the Metal Gear movie. Allegedly. Allegedly. That's been in development. How long? There's a lot. There's a lot yeah. of shit here. There's One Punch Man. What is that about? <laughs> the the Netflix show? Uh, Doesn't. Just says One Punch Man. Okay. Oh, I was thinking of One Piece. No, Never mind. no, no, no. Different, different, different thing. Uh, anyway, uh, and then Wes Ball. Haven't seen any. Yeah, of his movies. so Wes Ball, he was the director of the three Maze Runner movies and mm -hmm. also uh the upcoming Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which actually does look really cool. So I, Pete, I think the Maze Runner movies are like uh, there's like a cult following around. There's them. that came out like during the height of like uh, dystopian teen young mm -hmm. adult movies, like uh, the Hunger Games specifically, but like um, the Divergent series, the uh, the Maze Runner. He did a lot of Star Trek. Like that did he? There's just a lot of Star Trek in the credits. Is this is this because uh, I'm on his episodes or something? His Wikipedia page, it's mostly like uh, the early Marvel films like Spider-Man, Daredevil, uh, The Hulk, The Punisher, uh, the, the two Fantastic Four movies, a bunch of the original X-Men films. I think he did VFX on those. Okay. Yeah. I, that's I, it, yeah. I don't think he... Um, yeah, because most of his stuff is Spider-Man related. It says his art department, director, and visual Oh, you're talking effects. about West Ball now. Yeah, I'm talking about West Ball. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, he was a visual effects guy. Yeah. And then moves over to directing. Okay. That's what I'm talking about yeah. when I say that uh, he did a lot of Star Trek. Yeah. Okay. Um, And then we were talking about Maze Runner because he did, he did Maze Runner. Yeah, he directed the yeah. Maze Runner movies. Uh, he, Wes Ball, is... Uh, how old is he? I think, I think he's like 40. 40. He's 40-something. And yeah. he looks like he's like 12. <laughs> he looks very young. Born in 1980. I can't do math. 43? Yeah, 43. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so look he, at him. He looks, like, he looks like a teenager. Yeah. Well, you know, they say 40 is the new 12. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, Avi Arad. He's produced all the Spider-Man movies. Mm -hmm. um, however. Okay. Let's Let's hear it. He is not the reason why those movies are good. Right. Um, He's a producer. Right. Famously, the first two Spider-Man movies, you know, directed by Sam Raimi, the great movies. Everybody loves those movies. Uh, people always wonder why they can't just make Spider-Man 2 all the time. Um, Avi Arad famously took Sam Raimi off to the side before Spider-Man 3. He says, you know, you have to put Venom in the movie. 
Sam Raimi goes, I don't want to put Venom in me. You're putting Venom in the movie, Sam. I'm the producer. I finance this film. You're putting Venom in the movie. We got fucking Venom in the movie and it sucked. Yeah. Um, and then he was more of the... Now, I don't want to say like he was more in control of the um, Mark Webb, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, but he certainly seemed to, at least in like press events of it, like really take pride in the fact that those were, you know his spider-man movies in a sense i don't understand how venom could be such a cool character and they just every single time they fuck it up i mean the new game hasn't okay they reinvented him completely but like they got the basic idea of it right Mm -hmm. um and they're doing some really cool things with the concept of the symbiote i've seen more bad venom than good venom it's just hollywood you know because like the cartoons don't do it poorly the animated series didn't do it bad spectacular spider-man did it incredibly uh the comics when they're firing on all cylinders do really good venom work Mm -hmm. it's just hollywood knows venom is popular with the kids so let's just do venom shit but it's it's like having batman without the joker well no, because you could do a Batman movie without the Joker. Yeah, you can. You can, you can do Spider Man without Venom. Yeah, and they do all the time. But then when you put Venom in, he better, he fucking better be good. Yeah, but yeah, he he's so important, and they, yeah. they, no, they, they rarely get it right. Yeah, we yeah. have had bad Jokers, we've had, had, but yes. we've had a lot of great Jokers. Yes, we have yet to have a good Venom. Yeah. So, so yeah, I don't have the the utmost faith in this movie based on who is involved right now i mean i i I think i have a lot of faith in it just being a cookie cutter blockbuster hit and it will probably be at the bare minimum fun (laughs) it'll be like the mario movie where it was just fine fine yeah but you gotta understand this is zelda so this and it's live action so expectations are going to be different expectations are going to be it needs to be more than fine expectations are going to be this should be lord of the rings and nothing else yeah no it's it absolutely will not be this is going to be a way to uh uh get zelda in front of more eyeballs and sell a lot of how many more eyeballs do you need like Tears People who the, don't play games. Tears of the Kingdom sold how many millions of copies in like in less than a year? Yeah, but there's still people who don't play games. So who cares about them? It's like Pokemon. They're the anime for the people who don't play the games. I don't know. I think I think Nintendo coming late to the you know at at adapting their games as movies uh, mindset is a good thing. But I think the whole idea that having a movie adaptation is the final form of what a piece of entertainment should be right you know because a movie is not inherently better than a video game or a comic book or a television show it's just different but people are still in the mindset of if you can get a ho- a major hollywood movie released in theaters then that is the ultimate sign of uh respectability yeah i don't like that uh, b- yeah. but but i think that there's something to uh there are people who just straight up don't play video games, and and okay. putting it in front yeah. of them, I th- I think is but is, is it a reasonable get them to thing play, to want. Play the video game. No, this is how they're going to enjoy it. Like The Last of Us. Like there's a whole show for the people who don't want to play the game. I guess, I and mean, they're only going to know it as that. Yeah, I mean, I don't read books because I'm not a nerd, but like I'll watch <laughs> a movie based on a book. So, yeah, same thing with The Walking Dead. Yeah, I mean, the show, you know, really blew the lid off of that thing, yeah. but it was different than the comics. Um, Dreamcast guy, friend of the show. Hey, thanks for the fifteen months. He says, "Video games are for nerds." Really? Hot take. But nerds are take. my mortal enemy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Flo, with the most important question: Will you need to fish a cat? Oh God! Then I I fish walk out cat. of the theater. <laughs> yeah. If I need to catch a fish for a cat, I might not make it through the movie. I hope the first like half hour of that movie is just Link sitting at the trying to figure it out and he the cat won't take yeah. it. <laughs> here's the oh uh, here's the thing. Here's this is this is gonna be a problem. Link's gonna have to talk. I still think they can do a whole movie without him talking. You know 
goddamn well assured he's going to talk. He's going to talk. He's going to talk, but they could do it where he doesn't talk. And it would be fine. They could do like a reduced dialogue, but he's going to have to say things. Like Wally. No, he, he's, they're going to. Yeah, they're, he's the main character. He doesn't fucking talk at all. That's different because Wally is a robot. And he does talk. He says, Wally. Yeah. Link goes, yeah. <laughs> He should have Zelda with him the whole time. Yeah. And Zelda is the main character and 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 Link is just the cool guy. No, it's he's going to talk and people are going to hate it. And they're going to they're going to cast somebody with a bad voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very weird as people who yeah. have lived this long with uh, Zelda being one way all of a sudden we're going to see on the screen it's going to be very bizarre. Yeah. It's going to be a lot different than And then the, the transition. most important question is where does this fit on the timeline? Oh God! It's a new. It, I'm not even. Uh, he has to say, "Excuse me, princess." All right, I'm done with this. No, he has to say that. I'm. I will give the movie zero stars <laughs> if he doesn't say that. Um, let's talk about the Mario Kart DLC as quickly as possible. Because okay. I just don't care. Is this the last wave? Uh, yes. It's coming out in two days, November 9th more importantly look at these sales on these espresso machines oh jesus christ that's your ad i got uh and antarctic cruises <laughs> you go on a cruise no do not ever go on a cruise. i don't ever want to go on there a is cruise. no reason for anybody to ever go on People a cruise try to sell me on cruise. they all look horrible Pe- and i always see the things that go wrong on them it's your fault for going on the cruise people try to sell me on how awesome cruises are all the time I'm like none of that sounds appealing no, to there's me there's no no i saw the, swingers only reason to go on a cruise. i saw the trailer the trailer for that documentary about the people who were stuck on the cruise ships in the beginning of COVID. My fucking God. And that terrified me. I see so, all these like TikToks of, of your people eating in a dining room and the whole dining room just turns <laughs> like 180 degrees. Fuck that. I didn't realize that they have like full blown malls in these cruise ships. Yeah. So like there's like Toys R Us's in there. So yeah. And you're locked there yeah. for a week. a week. Yeah. No, 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 thank you. Don't want to do that. No, no. It's like going to Vegas, but worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so new courses. You get the Acorn Cup, Rome Avanti from Mario Kart Tour, DK Mountain from Double Dash, Daisy Circuit from Mario Kart Wii, a new course called Piranha Plant Cove. Oh. And you also get the Spiny Cup, uh, Madrid Drive from Mario Kart Tour, Rosalina's Ice World from Mario Kart 7, Bowser's Castle 3 from Super Mario Kart, and the Wii version of Rainbow Road. Also Is this any- the first new course? Because th- usually it's just Mario Kart Tour courses that yeah, we think are think new. Yeah, I think it might be. I don't remember there being a, a brand yeah, new I don't course know either. this whole time. Uh, we're also getting uh, how many? four new characters, including um, Funky Kong, Diddy Kong, Pauline, and Peachette. There are a lot of characters now all of a sudden. Yoshi's Island, apparently, was another new one. Okay. Uh, 16 additional Mii racing outfits, including the Daisy racing suit, unlockable by scanning the Daisy Amiibo. Uh, And new music player. uh, Oh, it adds a music player, which allows you to listen to to the music from each course. Is that like the music player that's in Smash Brothers where you can like turn the screen off on the Switch and put it in your pocket? That's pretty cool. I'm still waiting to see this new course in this video. I thought they need to do a new course every seven reused tracks. Really? I don't. I, 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 this is the first time I'm ever hearing about a new yeah. course. I, I just keep hearing about Mario Kart Tour courses. It's mostly Mario Kart Tour courses yeah. is what they've been doing in these DLCs. Which honestly I think is fine because th- that is new courses to most people. Yeah. Uh... So, Bob, you're going to play these with wood and everybody on stream? Fuck no, I'm never playing these. <laughs> SNES, Bowser's Castle 3. Piranha Plant Cove, there it is. Where are the new courses? Just Piranha Plant Cove is the new course. That was before Bowser's Castle 3. It says... Yeah, Piranha Plant Cove. It says Mario Kart Tour in the bottom left corner. In the bottom right corner. Oh. So, Game Informer lied to us. <laughs> or or Nintendo's lying. Yeah. We did talk about how Nintendo lies. Nintendo does lie. Are you guys lying? Yeah. Because you're in the chat telling me there's new courses. Are they also Mario Kart Tour courses? 
I'm never playing this game again. <laughs> I only play this when I'm hanging out with my friends. They included every tour exclusive track except for one, which is odd. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I have no interest in Mario Kart. Uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about, well, are we talking about Sonic mobile game? Yeah. Uh, in an all new Sonic adventure, the evil Dr. Eggman has discovered the ravine, the, sorry, the revere, the revere, an ancient device with powers <laughs> to, uh, to manifest dreams in the, in the real world, navigate twisted dreamscapes, rescue your friends and put a stop to Eggman's nightmarish dreams uh, of world domination. Join Sonic and friends as they dive deep into a bizarre world of dreams, unravel an original and captivating storyline while taking command of six dynamic playable characters with their unique abilities, dash, climb, and fly your way to victory against the infamous Eggman. This looks kind of cool. I know. that's It's basically, it's a 3D Sonic game for your phone. I don't mind that. I think I played Sonic 4 on the phone. I played it on Xbox yeah. Live Arcade, and I played it on the phone, yeah. and I actually kind of liked it. Yeah, well, like, Sonic 4 was a 2D side scroll. This is a yeah. full 3D game. Yeah, I mean, Sonic's had some decent games on the phone. I mean, they've been yeah. knockoffs of other things like Temple Run and, uh, and yes. Doodle Jump. Yeah. But they were good. Yeah. And this is this looks like to be another another good one. Yeah, we're I want to see how this yeah. works. Uh, never before seen Dream Worlds. We're not in Green Hill anymore. Played through 12 intricate levels uh, set with four unique Dream Worlds and with mind-bending environments that include uh, wall running, gravity changes, and more. Uh, Sonic Dream Team uh, bridges the gap between mobile and console, allowing players uh, quality experiences across iPhone, iPad, Mac, and Apple TV. That would be really cool if uh, if it's cross save. Yeah. Ooh. It's Apple Arcade. Yes. So uh, I mean, I got I just got the new iPhone. I'm dying to play some games on it. I still haven't played Resident Evil Village yet. Uh, I have it downloaded, but I haven't touched yeah. it yet. Apparently, Resident Evil Four comes out December twentieth on. Oh iphone and mac i might wait then i, I was gonna do a video this week on the iphone stuff yeah. but uh, i decided to do it on the, on the lenovo instead um i do want to see your iphone because i'll be honest i did watch the behind the scenes of making the apple event with the and i'm like fuck do i want a new phone i'll show you the footage i shot with it today <laughs> i i uh it's it's awesome and then i said no i need a new computer first and then i'll worry about the phone. <laughs> it is really cool yeah. also it's USB C, so i think my backbone controller just works yeah. all my controllers that i had for my uh android phones just i can just plug it in yeah. so i can play sonic like that um you yeah, know i've been i've been loving the phone i you know what i made i i just uh t instead of doing the work that i needed to do today <laughs> i um i have been uh designing a, a magsafe clip that holds an nd filter because mm -hmm. The shots that the iPhone gets are great. Yeah. But the biggest flaw right now, the biggest tell that it's iPhone footage and not like a cinema camera footage yeah. is that everything, if something's too bright, it's blown out. And otherwise you need to lower the shutter speed and then everything looks looks choppy. And that's how you get like that iPhone look. Yeah. Things look like weirdly choppy. Um. So it needs an ND filter. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm designing this thing that just snaps onto the back with a, with the MagSafe port, and it is the ND filter. Okay. Um, but no, I've been, I was, uh, I have it. I have to show. You, I have it set up so you know it has that action button. Yeah. I have it so that uh, when I press the action button, it opens the Black Magic app, and all of the manual settings are the same as my cinema camera. So I, I press that, and it's ready to shoot like a cinema camera. <laughs> So I'm trying to, for the next couple of videos, I'm going to be swapping between using my actual camera and my phone and trying to see uh, what works and what doesn't with it. And I'm, I'm, I'm starting to figure it out. Um, anyway, that was, oh, we were talking about Sonic. I also wanted to talk about uh, Sonic Superstars. I played more of it and yeah. I hate it more oh, now. Oh, no. So, oh, uh, that's I, upsetting. I don't know if I... You said it was okay last it time. It was okay. Um, I'm starting to think this might be my least favorite 2D Sonic oh, game. Oh, no. What's worse? I mean, people don't like Sonic 4, but I actually didn't hate Sonic 4. Yeah, I never understood like the, the vitriol towards Sonic 4. So what's another bad 2D Sonic game? 
the Game Gear ones, but I feel like that's unfair. Yeah, that's un- that's a little unfair. Well, which well, I liked Chaos. Chaos was good. Uh, Triple Trouble, people don't like. I have to play it. I haven't played Sonic it. Two. People don't like on the Game Gear. Yeah, uh, I don't like the. I don't like Sonic Two on Game Gear. Yeah, it's just a shitty way it's to play. Too Sonic hard. 2. So, what else? Oh, Sonic Blast. That's a really shitty one on Game Gear. Oh, because it's like 3D Blast, but not. Yes. <laughs> okay, the first thing that comes up is the uh, dessert from Sonic Drive. <laughs> the Sonic Blast. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I don't like it. I think I talked about this last time, but uh, you can only get one Chaos Emerald per level. Uh-huh. So uh, this I don't think I talked about, though. You get to the eighth level. You finally have all the Chaos Emeralds. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you tried to get them all, yeah, you should finally have all the Chaos Emeralds by the eighth level. The first act of the eighth level, the final boss uh, takes all of your rings away, so you oh. can't. So you can't turn into Supersonic. The first, the very first moment of Act Two of World Eight. Uh, the little ferret looking guy, what the hell's his name? Oh, Fang. Fang yeah. comes right up to you, sucks all your Chaos Emeralds away. You can't use any of your Chaos Emerald abilities or the or a, a Supersonic. Oh my so god. So you just got all of the abilities in Supersonic and you cannot use them in the in in the act that you finally got them all in. It's so fucking stupid. Wow. Yeah. There's more levels after that. Yeah. But uh they're not uh well designed. That's so that's disappointing. I still haven't beaten it. I'm on like at world 10, which is yeah. far longer than I thought it was going to be. But, uh, that really pissed me off. That yeah. really frustrated me to the point where I, I was cause, cause it's supposed to be extremely rewarding. You're supersonic. Now yeah. you want to be able to use it. And they're like, no, fuck you. You yeah. can't use it. Uh, <laughs> buttholes. Uh, anyway, uh, more Microsoft news. Yes. Uh, Microsoft employees aren't happy that they're losing their free game pass. Ultimate. Microsoft is removing uh, the free Game Pass Ultimate benefits for most of its 238,000 employees, and some aren't very happy about it. Sources familiar with Microsoft's plans tell The Verge that the company started informing employees this week that in January 2024, the free Game Pass Ultimate benefits for permanent Microsoft employees will no longer be available. That is a lot of employees. Yes. I did not think about that. And they're all losing Game Pass. (laughs) Uh, Xbox employees will continue to keep the... Uh, sorry, Xbox employees will continue to keep the benefit, but the vast majority of Microsoft employees who aren't part of the Xbox or Microsoft gaming team uh, will see the benefit disappear next year. Microsoft employees will be able to purchase a discounted 12-month Game Pass <laughs> Ultimate subscription at the company's internal store. Some Microsoft employees have taken to the company's internal messaging platform to voice their objections about the benefit being removed. The employee posted uh, post even prompted Xbox chief Phil Spencer to respond, noting that he wasn't aware of the changes and is looking into the situation. Uh, update. Phil Spencer has looked into the situation and everybody's getting their game pass back. Uh, Spencer has now confirmed that the decision will be reversed and that Microsoft's employees will keep the game pass ultimate benefit. Here's Spencer's full message to Microsoft employees um, via the internal Viva platform. After looking into this more with the team, I just want to confirm that there will be no change made to the game pass availability in 2024. If you have access to game pass offer today, you will continue to have access. I appreciate the time to get up to speed and sorry for the questions and confusion, uh, confusion created. Thanks for supporting Xbox. There's 238,000 Microsoft employees. Yeah. I don't think it's unreasonable to take Game Pass Ultimate away from somebody. <laughs> They're not all using it. Yeah. Uh, all, they said that they were going to keep it for all Xbox employees. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. They're the ones who were going to use it. What is it? $17, $17 a month for Game Pass? Ah, uh, sounds about right. Yeah. I mean, so that's $204 a year times, what is it? 238 thousand but that's the thing is that all of these people are not going to buy game pass they're they're probably yeah. not using it that's 48 million dollars to leave it on the table i think it it makes sense to give everybody game pass because you want everybody to that works at your company to, yeah. to be able to provide feedback on the service that you're making you know yeah um but again most of these people that are working at microsoft and not xbox are probably not interested in it yeah. anyway so i don't see what the big deal is but i'm sure like they have kids who are interested you know they probably have family members who are interested and would want to use the 
that the game that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. It's that all of these Microsoft employees were giving it to their kids. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what the problem is. And you know what? That sh- they should be allowed to do that. Yeah, it should be a friends and family discount thing. I like how every time The Verge has an Xbox or Microsoft article, they do something wacky with the Xbox logo. <laughs> they and it's always different. Yeah, it's they- always like a nice little. Uh, graphic design thing was it different between the two articles is there oh yeah oh. i posted an up i posted the update because it's a separate one it's a separate it's not the same update in the it's not an illustration no it's just a picture of the yeah. game pass card i think you can look up the graphic designer though and i think because i have done this before <laughs> i've seen i've seen uh yeah uh is this the guy I think this is I think this is the guy. <laughs> yep, that looks like a graphic designer for the Verge and IGN, all right. Uh I want I Oh, the Verge. Let's let, let's yeah. see if it's all Yeah, no, he just yeah. takes the logos and does cool shit with it. I like that. That's all that's all he yeah. does though. I want to see just the stuff he's done for Xbox. Hmm. Anyway, uh okay, moving on. Uh does this count as Xbox news? Activision explains Modern Warfare 3 file size? Uh, f- not really, but sure, why not? Uh, Modern Warfare 3 campaign and early access now live. Players have found a total Call of Duty install imprint of an eye-watering 234.9 gigabytes on the PlayStation 5. They just don't care about your no. storage space. This and appears, they haven't for a while. This appears to include Modern Warfare 2, now called Call of Duty HQ, as well as Modern Warfare 3's campaign. It does not include what? other unreleased parts of Modern Warfare 3, such as multiplayer and zombies. Activision issued a statement explaining what's going on while admitting the file sizes are larger than last year. This is due to the increased amount of content available day one, including open world zombies, support for item carry forward from Call of, uh, from Modern Warfare 2, as well as map files for current war zone uh, for the current war zone. Note, as part of our ongoing optimization efforts, your final installation size will be actually be smaller than the combined previous Call of Duty experiences. Activision pointed out players are able to reduce install footprint by heading to the manage file section of the COD HQ launcher menu. From there, you can uninstall specific content you're not playing. Activision said it will share more information on launch day. And what? I think I hit the mute button. Oh, how long has the sound been off? <laughs> Mark it down. What's the timestamp? Yeah, one thirty-three. Okay. Uh, so as I was saying, Modern Warfare Three was supposed to be DLC, but now it's just regular, uh, full uh, single-player. Uh, it's not single-player. Full standalone release. But that's causing a lot of problems, such as there's no platinum trophy on PlayStation because DLC does not get platinum trophy. It's integrated into Modern Warfare 2 instead of being a standalone release. So it's causing all these like weird quirks instead of just being a regular normal game. I mean, this has been a problem with Warzone for a really long time. Yeah. Uh, Warzone, there were a lot of games that came out. There, Warzone was so modern warfare one came out Mm -hmm. and then a little bit late like a month or two after that or a a couple months i don't remember exactly but uh warzone came out after that yes and it used the same assets and you needed modern warfare to be downloaded in order to even use in order to even play warzone right um so then there were some other games released Uh uh-huh but you still needed a modern warfare to be downloaded in order to play warzone i thought warzone was a separate they started to slowly pull it away okay but you needed parts of modern warfare to be downloaded in order to use warzone okay yeah um and then this is happening now again with modern with warzone 2 is you need modern warfare 2 yeah and this is the this is the same issue i went on my a playstation or I, somehow i don't have modern i don't have uh modern warfare 2 I, okay. I did not purchase Modern Warfare 2. I have it on all of my computers because I played Warzone 2. Okay. Um, that's... Now they're taking it a step further and yeah. being like, in order to even play Modern Warfare 3, you need Modern Warfare 2 yeah. because all of the assets are being taken yeah. from Modern Warfare 2. So, 
at some point, Microsoft's going to come in here and be like, hey, guys, you got to fucking chill yeah. with, all, with, all, with all of this. Yeah, no, because this this is goddamn that ridiculous. That is super lazy. to like, like, it's one thing to just reuse assets from the previous game. Games do that all the time. Yeah. That's not a big deal. But to straight up be like, hey, you need the entire last game in order to play this new game, mm-hmm. that is insane, especially when it's a standalone thing. If it's yeah. DLC, that's not a big deal, but it's a standalone thing. And you're asking us to download two games now. Yeah. That's fucked up. Especially because our PlayStation comes with 825 gigabytes or something. Yeah. Insanely small. Yeah. So uh, a, a one third of it yeah. is gone. It's going to be Call of Duty. Duty. Yeah. yeah. Which it was a problem with Warzone. Warzone, yeah. every time there was an update, it'd be like a 100 gigabyte update. And then I'd have to delete shit off of yeah. my PlayStation. Uh, yeah. It's, it's very lazy. It was 200 game. gigabytes on the PlayStation 4. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just gonna get worse with the, like the H- the 4K textures and stuff. So that was another thing. I was listening to the Digital Foundry podcast where they talk about me, by the way. Oh yeah. Me. Oh, well, wait, look at this, the OLED. Because uh, of the OLED burning. I don't know if you know this, <laughs> but I'm famous now. Um, they talked about how there is a setting where it streams the textures. Hmm. So apparently that breaks everything and it's yeah. all fucked up and the textures look like shit now but uh apparently some of the textures might be coming from the internet while you're playing the game which like is like interesting because then you don't need to download hd texture packs yeah. but it needs to work right uh it's weird hearing your name get brought up in podcast yes gavin <laughs> <laughs> yes it sure is <laughs> Um. Anyway, we're getting a new. We are getting a new Nintendo Switch this year. Yes. Uh, it's we're finally getting a new Black Friday bundle. <laughs> oh N- wow! Nintendo's Black Friday sale uh, starts November nineteenth, when the company will sell oh. a bundle that packs an OLED Switch, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and three months of um, Switch Online for three hundred and forty nine ninety nine. The package, which also includes special Joy-Con controllers marked with the Smash Ultimate uh, theme two-tone gray design, will offer a savings of $67.98 over purchasing the items separately. It's a pretty good deal for people looking to snag a newer Switch model at the tail end of the console's lifespan. The inclusion of Smash Ultimate and Switch Online is handy since you'll need a membership to play online. Nintendo's other Black Friday bundle pairs a Mario, a Super Mario Party, the 2018 version of the, of the game with red and blue Joy-Cons. This set will be available a bit earlier on November 10th for $100, saving you $40. Again, it's a package that uh, just makes sense. You'll get some extra Joy-Cons to play Mario Party with your pals. This is a great deal, actually. Yeah. And it is the uh, it is the special edition. It's, you get the Joy-Con. Yeah. There, well, there was no back to the Smash Brothers special edition, right? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, this looks. This is awesome. This yeah, is, this is a this is a good deal actually. Um, finally, we're getting a new Black Friday bundle besides yeah. <laughs> the uh, Mario Kart Black Friday bundle. But yes. we're also getting that too, right? I think we are. Are we? I didn't see that. I think so. I remember hearing that we are, and it's still the old Switch. Like, it's not even the OLED. <laughs> yeah, no, it's still the, still the regular <laughs> Switch. Um, lastly, Nintendo is offering uh, discounts on games. Uh, Breath of the Wild, Luigi's Mansion 3, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and Mario Odyssey will sell for $40. Um, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, Kirby's Return to Dreamland, Minecraft Legends uh, will sell for $30. Uh, and everybody wants to Switch will be $20. Wow. Yeah. That's already discounted. <laughs> Uh, the original special edition uh, uh, Smash Brothers Switch had uh, characters on the dock. Oh, yeah. Uh, this one does not. I don't think That's it okay. has anything on the back. Chad is saying that it has stuff on the back, but I don't think it does. I th- uh, yeah, there's the there's the back. It has nothing. You guys are liars. Um, yeah, I remember, I remember when that came out. I was like, That's kind of stupid. The, the, that was the era of bad special editions for yeah. the Nintendo Switch. Um. All right. So good deal so far. When is our Black Friday special episode? Is that going to be the week before? Maybe. I guess. Actually, when is Black Friday? The twenty fourth. Yes. 
So we have to do it the 17th? No, the 16th. No, wait, what am I doing? Black wait, Friday is I? the 24th. So we could do it the 21st. That's true. We'll probably end up doing it the 21st. Yeah. Yeah. And then Cyber Monday is the following Monday. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Black cool. Friday is happening like all month now. Mm-hmm. So like the the uh, these sales start November 19th, which is not Black Friday. Okay, true. When do we get like all of the circulars? Don't we get don't some of them come like that some week? Some of them are coming earlier. Yeah, some of them we get early, but yeah. I, th- I think some of them we get like that week. Like, yeah, we get pretty late. That's why we do it so late. Yeah, yeah. No, I think doing it the twenty fourth would be fine. Uh, and then we'll be doing some shopping. Yes. All right, we got to plow through the rest of this. There's uh. uh okay. We uh, really just need to talk about Epic Games. Okay. I don't think there's much else that's. You want to talk right? about Sony losing the ability to post to Twitter? No. Okay. I I was on so I was on PlayStation the other day because yeah. I wanted to tweet something from my uh uh Spider Man uh huh and I was shocked that I was able to post to Twitter. Yeah, it makes sense. The share button on <laughs> no. the controller. <laughs> no, because they they made it so you have to pay to use the API, and uh, I think now you can't. Now there, it, I think it took a long time for yeah. I that think it to finally, finally. I think it finally caught up with Sony, and now Sony's like, "Hey, we ain't paying this shit." Yeah, I think it happened with Nintendo also. I think you. I don't think no. You, you can, can still post on Nintendo. You can. Yeah, but I doubt that's gonna last very long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because for a while Nintendo didn't switch over to the 280 character limit. They yeah. Were, they were running the 140 for a long time. Yeah, they so. didn't. Uh, they they don't. Yeah, they don't care. No. But they also have a share button. They do. But now that share button is functionally useless. Yeah. Well, it's it's less useless with Sony and Microsoft because it'll upload to the mobile app. Yeah, and then from there you, you Yeah. That's so what I ended up doing. I ended up just doing It's just that. one extra step, which is kind of it's kind of sucks, but like it's which what you gotta do to get past, you know. The, you know what the I think it was? I think I needed to log in okay. and I couldn't. Like I couldn't log. Like there was a weird, like, oh yeah, like two factor that made it so that I couldn't log right. in on the PlayStation because they didn't update with yeah. X. Uh, so I just sent it to my phone. That worked great. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's go right to the Epic game thing. Right. So we can on Monday during shit. the first day of Epic vs. Google legal showdown over App Store fees, both companies gave their opening statements and began poking at each other's witnesses. During the day, Epic admitted that its digital PC game store still isn't profitable. The Epic Games Store launched in late 2018 as a direct competitor to Steam, offering free games to users every month and more favorable uh, profit split for publishers and devs. The store has continued to grow since its initial launch, adding more features and games, including some exclusive titles, temporarily at least, only for the Epic Games Store and not Steam. During that time, the store has angered some gamers and has been a controversial money sink for Epic. Now, in 2023, five years after it went live, the store is still failing to make money for the company behind Fortnite and the Unreal Engine. Today, The Verge reported that while the witness stand uh, during the court proceedings, Epic Games Store boss Steve Allison admitted that the PC store isn't profitable and said that growth uh, was still the company's main goal. In 2021, this was Epic's same argument. During its highly publicized legal fight with Apple over the same in-app fees it's now suing Google about, Epic uh, CEO Tim Sweeney, who liked a tweet of mine one time, uh, (laughs) tweeted that losing more than $300 million on the store was all part of the plan. What the fuck? It was a fantastic plan and helped grow the store and its uh, business. Uh, Also during the same trial, Epic said its PC store would start turning a profit in 2023. Uh, now in the year in the year checks calendar 2023 Epic has admitted that its grand plans to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on free games for its users to grow its store at an artificially fast pace didn't pan out and Epic Games Store is still not profitable and remember Epic just went through massive layoffs in late September because the company was as explained by Sweeney spending more than it made it seems that throwing endless stacks of cash into the void and hope she'll ma- start making money one day isn't a viable strategy for running a massive company. Who would have guessed? Okay, so they lost three hundred and thirty million dollars. Yes. In the company did in total. 
Yeah. yeah. And then where's Tim Sweeney pulling these numbers out of? <laughs> There's a lot of math here being done to justify that the company's actually profitable, and I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Well, no, he's he's saying that like it's okay that we're taking a loss because we'll get, we'll get a profit eventually. Oh, they're getting people to use exactly Epic. Okay, I yeah. under, I understand. I understand. It, that, it, that's it, what it, he's trying to say. Your it's like how console companies make consoles at a loss because yeah. they want people to... They'll make it up in other ways. Yeah. yeah. When people get the console, they're going to lock them into the ecosystem. Yeah. And then Epic uh, has not made up for it in other ways, it seems, in the five years since the Epic Game Store launched. We're still getting echoes every once in a while, and I think it is when we switch to this. And I'm, I was just looking into it to see... I, I, have, okay. I have no fucking... Oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. What is it? What is it? I added a delay and then I've removed the delay to get rid of the echo, but then it created a delay. Okay. I added a, I added an audio delay to let it sync up with our video, Okay. but that causes an echo sometimes. So I removed it. And then the last episode, there was a, de a delay, just the whole episode with our voices in the audio. Okay. So I tried to add it back and then I forgot that that creates an echo sometimes. <laughs> so now I have to make it. I have, I think what I have to do, it's just have a delay. We'll just fucking okay. have a delay. Um, anyway. Uh, GTA 6 news just broke. You're fucking full oh of shit. Oh my god. What? I don't believe you for a second. What could it possibly be? I've seen that... a, lot of, a lot of news stories. Oh, seven minutes ago. Jason Schreier. Let's see. Oh, oh boy. Breaking Rockstar plans to announce Grand Theft Auto 5 as early as this week and will release a trailer in December. Sources tell Bloomberg News the most anticipated video game on the planet will soon be revealed. Interesting. Okay. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. I mean, uh, I... So this was brought up because Rockstar, no, Take Two told investors they're going to make like an insane amount of money yeah. in the next fiscal year or something. And everyone's like, well, what else could that possibly yeah. be? So, anyway, uh, okay, that's it. Okay. Anything else? I think, I think we're good. Uh, no, I guess that can be it. Uh, we talked about sony losing twitter uh there was footage of a canceled daredevil game that was nearly complete that got shut down the story behind that's pretty interesting because apparently sony came in and was like if you want to put it on our platform we need editorial oversight over everything you put in it um so that's an interesting story there's an ad for modern warfare 3 when you boot up your xbox now oh yeah i don't like that yeah that was that was a big deal that's not cool. Don't do that, no. Microsoft. But there's also uh, now there's. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! This is by Brian Altano, and it says Nathan Fielder has been cast as Link in the upcoming <laughs> Legend of Zelda film. And there he is. I would see it. I would love that. Yeah. I would like it a lot more if that's how it was. Okay, uh, we're gonna talk to you guys now. Yes. Starting with those who left comments in last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. I'll also thank uh, Plorable for the Prime subscription and Martin Zelli for the six months, AO, six months subversary. How you doing? Hey. Also, uh, I think I missed some people before. Did I say thank you to Drew Suave for the 40 months? Hope all is well. I think I missed that before. Um, Gamer Dad Kokui, thanks for gifting us up to Gavin. Um, and Milkman Leachy, thanks for the 14 months. A great podcast, boys. I enjoy it every week. Piss. <laughs> uh, okay. I am going into here. Uh, all right. This is Jeff Thompson Magic leaving a comment from last week. He says, the first shot post opening of y'all dressed up smiling at the camera was so good. Y'all are the best. Yeah, last week was We Halloween. are the best. We, You know what? Yeah. We are the best. <laughs> it's a me, Eric, says, I plugged my external drive from my PS4 to my PS5 recently, and it just worked. 
I also tried to look for a Bob-like character in Spider-Man 2 around coffee shops, <laughs> but they're all generic characters. That's They made a big deal about how they tried to make all like most of the NPCs unique. Like everyone's got different body types. Everyone's like, look, so it's not the same character model. Uh, so that's kind of upsetting that everybody looks generic. I mean, I said that uh, a lot of Brooklyn looked like copy and pasted buildings. Yeah. There you're you gonna go. have a Brooklyn coffee shop. Yeah. And you're not gonna put me in it. <laughs> um it's good that you can just plug your PlayStation 4 hard drive yeah. into a PlayStation 5. Um that was like a thing, like uh yeah, you could play PlayStation 4 games off of a drive, but you couldn't play PlayStation no, 5. No, PlayStation 5 play. yeah, they have to be yeah. on an SSD. I just raw dogged it. When I got a PlayStation <laughs> 5, I just didn't transfer anything over i did the transfer you, you hook it up with an ethernet cable and it, it's the best it's it takes an hour and everything transfers over no problem i did that with my iphone yeah and it went great oh you did the thing where you take a picture of like the the glowing orb and it transfers no it i just literally put it next to it and it just oh it does did, that it now oh that's in. good yeah i might have had to take a picture of a qr code yeah there's like it pops up there's a qr code you scan that no you know what it was i put it next to it and it came up on my old phone and said press this button yeah and then i pressed it. okay so you don't it. have to take a picture of the qr you don't have code to take a picture. okay that's cool um but some apps broke some apps uh weren't logged like youtube wasn't logged in for some reason okay uh, and then one of my two factors broke, but then it was super easy to get it back. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, really it was a very seamless experience. Yeah. Um, I usually like to just start from scratch because yeah. all of my stuff's on the cloud anyway. I, I like to have the device be as fast as possible. But when I got my iPhone 11, I did that and I lost all my two factor stuff yeah. and it was a huge pain in the ass. So anyway, so, Suga Monster says, I just want a Nintendo handheld that can play all cartridges. That way I can take all my Pokemon games on the go. I mean, that would be the dream. They got to make a Pokemon device. Yeah. Pokemon company make their own uh, hardware. Will it be as good as the software they've been making the past few years? <laughs> Hopefully at least as good. <laughs> Now, there were a lot of rumors from Gamescom about the new uh, PlayStation, uh, about the new Nintendo Switch 2. Right. Which apparently that, is bullshit, according to Furukawa. Right. Saying that they were showing it behind closed doors and stuff. Yeah. Do you remember there being any rumors from that about it having two cartridge slots? No. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got into an argument with Wood on the Nintendo podcast because he said that there was one that said that it could play DS games. I was like, no, there was one report that said that it was all digital, and there was one report that said that it mm -hmm. had a cartridge slot, and that was it. Anyway. My point was that all, we had all these crazy reports from Gamescom, yeah. but nothing was was like official. It was yeah, all yeah. like third-party accounts yeah. that ended they're up They're showing it behind closed doors. That was it, yeah. Yeah, but it ended up being a game of telephone where, like, people were making up these fucking, yeah. like, theories about what they thought that the behind-the-closed-doors device actually looked like. But mm -hmm. the only things that were legit were that it played the Matrix demo uh -huh. and it played Breath of the Wild at 60 frames. Yeah. Those were the only... <laughs> yeah. Those were the only, like, concrete things that we heard from reputable sources. Anyway, Charlie Fenn. Oh, Will... Hey. Yakuza can't be Japan's answer to Grand Theft Auto. Look at the wackiness. It is obviously their answer to Saints Row. Makes sense. Makes sense. Saints Row is a very, very wacky series. Um, I agree. Cosmic Illustrator says, I've been trying to think what could Nintendo do to make me excited for the new Switch, and it turns out it's a clamshell design. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know what it is about them, but I love them. I love me a clamshell handheld. I mean, yeah, you can fold it up and you can put it in a bag. I like, nicer. I like the idea of, because yeah. you don't need a case. Yeah. You can just Because you don't need to protect the screen. Yeah. But I thought I liked clamshell designs until i got the retroid flip and that is a horrible clamshell design yeah. like the, the the actual hinge is garbage yeah um so nintendo doing a clamshell is great they all yeah. of their clamshells have always been great yeah uh but if a third party makes a clamshell uh i would be weary 
We're starting to see some emulators with clamshells, and they're not all going to be great. Uh, that's it for last week. Now we're in the chat. chat yes. The live chat. Make it good. I wandered off. Did we talk about The Escapist? Uh, uh, no. You read The Escapist. I or do watch read The Yacht Escapist. I, I've been a fan of The Escapist for a long time. I kind of fell down a little bit of a rabbit hole yesterday. Yeah, so basically what happened was... Uh, it was yesterday or Monday. Uh, the the gamers or network, the people who own the Escapist, fired the editor in chief Nick Calandra and a whole bunch of people from the uh, from the video team. And in response, the entire video team, including uh, Yasi Croshaw, their most popular video creator, Darren Mooney, their film critic, who's the best film critic online, uh, Marty Sleva, uh, Frost, everybody just quit. And now Nick Calandra and Yahtzee are forming their own, basically their version of what the Escapist was doing with the entire video team who just either got fired or quit. Um, (laughs) Nick Calandra, in all honesty, like, because I've been reading the Escapist for before he took over, there was a point where the Escapist was like literally just Yahtzee and nobody else because everyone else either fired or quit in protest from years of bad management. And Nick basically took the website and turn it around and made it like very good like it was one of the best unique gaming websites with a lot of good people with a lot of good voices on it um and they just said like hey we don't like what you're doing nick Nick said nick calandra said that uh he was fired because he didn't meet goals that were not properly explained to him and that sounds like you know a you know a corporate uh, we want you to do this, and you didn't do it the right way, yeah. so we're letting you go. Yeah. Type deal. Meanwhile, you know, all signs point to the company being more profitable and more popular than it had been in years, thanks to what you know they were able to do. So for the enti- the entire video team to leave, including Yahtzee, is like a big deal. And I hope that their next project, they already like are starting their next project. It's called Second Wind. Um, you can subscribe to their Discord and their YouTube channel already. They're going to do a live stream tomorrow about what the future is going to be. And I think it's going to be good because, you know, the escapists, especially in the last few years, was incredible. So check that shit out. <laughs> um, George McFarlane says, Bob, I got my Odin 2 today and have been loving it. It's incredible for emulation, but now I just need good Android games to play on it as well. Um, Dead Cells. There's a, actually like a decent amount of yeah. good Android games. Uh, you, well... I was going to say that Sonic game, but I think that might be iOS exclusive for now. Yes. For now, at least. Um, I, I got to be honest with you. Uh, Call of Duty Mobile is pretty good. I I'm, remember I'm waiting being, for Warzone Mobile, but... I remember it being like very popular, especially when it launched. Yeah, and it's not bad. It, it literally is just Call of Duty on your phone. Uh, I've been sitting here waiting for a Warzone mobile because that's supposed to be Verdansk. It's supposed to be the... Oh, it says Rebirth Island? Yeah. Oh, they have, like, goals. They're going to add Rebirth to it? Okay. Yeah, Verdansk, Rebirth. That's cool. It's going to be basically the first Warzone just yeah. on mobile. Um. Anyway, I have my Odin sitting in that box. One of those boxes is the Odin. One of those boxes... Two of those boxes are Lokis. One of them is an <laughs> Odin. Um... So I just, I have a lot of other things to make videos on right mm-hmm. now. So uh, I don't know when I'll, next week might be the PlayStation portal. Ooh. Yeah. Or it might be the week after that. I don't know when I'm getting it. I, interestingly, uh, last night I just randomly was like, uh, I pre-ordered that, right? And then I looked at my emails and I could not find the yeah. pre-order for the PlayStation portal. So I went on the PlayStation direct website, no orders, no pass orders. Really? I looked at my text messages with my friend, Sean, who sent me the link said pre-orders are up. Uh-huh. And then I said, done pre-ordered, yeah. but I never did. Okay. I don't So I just pre-ordered it again and now uh-huh. it's in my past orders. And I looked at my credit card statements to make sure that I didn't accidentally pre-order it from like, it a different there. email or something. It wasn't there. So I don't know what, I don't know what happened. Yeah. So if you pre-ordered the PlayStation Portal, make sure you have a confirmation because yeah. I don't know what happened. I I must maybe I clicked out before I like confirmed it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Will and Bob, what's your favorite type of coffee? Oat milk, flat white. 
I I really like it's a fall thing. It's Dunkin' Donuts uh, maple waffle flavored coffee. You get it in the little bag. You can get K cups for it. Is it and just? It, it's know. just maple syrup. Basically, but it tastes fucking good. So. I put maple syrup in. Uh, if I want to sweeten something up a little yeah. bit, maple syrup is the first thing that I grab. Yeah. You put it in the uh, you put it in the milk and then you steam it. See, I what I do is I put it in the grounds and then I pour the coffee. That's in the fucked. It tastes good to me. Uh, that's called a maple shea when you take a a latte and you put a little bit of put a little bit. See, of maple I'm not syrup like in. I just I I don't. This coffee is fine. It's just regular ass coffee is fine with some almond milk. But in it, it could be because regular milk makes me shit. But too it much. could be amazing. I don't care. I don't, I don't care enough. Maple in matcha is the shit. I went to True Foods something or other. It's uh, we went to this place at the King of Prussia Mall with AJ and uh, uh Josh Atten. Uh huh. We went to that restaurant that true foods restaurant oh i remember that one yeah they have it at the roosevelt field mall now really and i went there and they have a horchata matcha thing okay and it was great okay any progress on the b-roll twitch emote no i completely forgot about it (laughs) b-roll and i think i need a i think i need a bing one uh anyway do you have any ideas for actors for Zelda and Link and Ganon? Uh, so because I, re- I can't think of a single person, says Kate McKett. I remember. Don't ask me why I remember. IGN like they famously did like the the fake Zelda trailer like a thousand years ago for like an April Fool's joke. Um, but they also did. This is in two thousand six. They did a fan casting for who should be in a Legend of Zelda movie. This is 2006. 2006. Oh, my God. So none of you in the chat was were born in, yet. I was in high school. Um, they had some choices. I mean, again, 2006. Mm-hmm. So Orlando Bloom for Link. Basically Legolas because they okay. want Legolas. That's like the easy point. Uh Allison Lohman as Zelda. Who is that? She, uh, she. I don't think she's in anything you've ever seen. Um, <laughs> okay. Big Fish, Matchstick Men, White Oleander, uh, Where the Truth Lies, The Big White. Nope. Yeah, nothing you've seen. Um, and then for Ganondorf, they specifically the said, yeah, The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Even in 2006, yeah. it was The Rock. Uh, and they also said they want Neil Gaiman to write and Robert Zemeckis to direct. The Rock wouldn't do it because no. he needs to be the bad guy. Um, Batista. Batista, yeah. Should be, be Batista. Yeah. He would do it. And he yeah, would be Batista great. would do it. Um, they're going to get Tom Holland to be Link. <laughs> they could. They definitely they might. get Tom Holland they, to be Link. It's, it's going to be Tom Holland. Yeah. Because of spider-man and uncharted it's yeah gonna, it's gonna be tom holland oh god um all right is that it i think that's we we are over time so uh goodbye thanks all for right. hanging out thank everybody. you for tuning in thank you for watching us thank you for chatting with us as always the wolf den podcast is every tuesday at 8 p.m eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolf if you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put it up as an archive version over on our youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf den podcast so you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you can go and check us out as an audio show wherever you get your audio podcast from apple Podcasts, spotify YouTube music, uh, Audible, apparently. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Please be sure to check out Superman 78, The Metal Curtain. Uh, Issue 1 came out today, illustrated by Gavin Guidry in the chat. It is excellent. Subscribe to all six issues. It's going to be amazing. Oh, my God. What a ringing endorsement. Yes. Um, Thanks for being here, everybody. I will be doing a video on the Lenovo Legion Go this week. Everybody keeps asking me how to compare it to the Ally and the Steam Deck. Yeah. I'm making a whole ass video, so it'll be answered in that. Um, it's not as simple as just buy this, yeah. you know? Somebody was like, I already have an Ally. Should I buy this? Why would you spend seven hundred dollars <laughs> yeah. on something you already have? Let him make sure that it can run Crisis first, and then yeah, <laughs> probably. Actually, who knows? Yeah, 
I'm trying to find somebody to, to, to raid right now. Um, let's raid Beta. He's finishing Sonic Frontiers. Is he live? Beta 64? Oh, he is. Okay. We will do that. Uh, he's fishing. Okay. Uh, go watch him. I will see you all. I actually don't think I'm going to be streaming on Thursday because I have to do the podcast. So I don't know when I'll see you. Bye. Bye.